Now what I'd like to do in part 3 here, cover <clears throat> Zechariah chapter 12, verse 3. In Zechariah chapter 12, verse 3, it says this, And in that day will I make Jerusalem a burdensome stone for all people. All that burden themselves with it shall be cut in pieces, though all the people of the earth be gathered against it. Now in verse 9 it says, And it shall come to pass in that day that I will seek to destroy all the nations that come against Jerusalem. We also see in the, in the book of Genesis chapter 12, Again, the word of the Lord, uh, verses 2 and 3. And I will make of thee a great nation, speaking about Israel, and I will bless thee and make, uh, make thy uh, name great, and sh that shall be a blessing. And, now listen to this, and I will bless them that bless thee and curse them that curse thee, and it shall be... Uh, all the families of the earth blessed and we're going to Israel all the families of the earth will be blessed through what through the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ and him dying on the cross and giving us salvation again that was no better blessing in the world than anybody can have so we were told by Zechariah that the in the end times that all the nations of the world were going to come against Jerusalem and Jerusalem would be the focal point of the problems of the world, a burdensome stone, and anybody that dealt with Jerusalem um, would find themselves actually against the Lord. And it says that when everybody comes against Jerusalem, they're all going to be cut into pieces. So, again, one of the birth pangs of these last days of nation after nation falling away from Israel and uh, coming against Israel because of what's happening in Jerusalem. Now, in if you're new to Bible prophecy, this is what happened. In 70 AD, the Jews who occupied and actually owned, they, were, they still had the services there, uh, the sacrifices in their, in their second temple. Now they were uh, dominated by Rome, but at least at that time when Christ was alive, that they were still doing the sacrifices in the temple. But then there was an uprising in 70 AD, and Titus went in and he uh, destroyed the temple and the, the people of uh, the Jews were dispersed and according to the prophecy in the last days Israel would become again as a nation again which they did in May 14, 1948 but at the, at the end just prior to Jesus Christ coming back they would again have these sacrifices uh, at a brand new temple that was going to be built which hasn't been built, been built yet but it will be and so Jerusalem was always in the hands of the Gentiles up until of 1967 when there was a war uh, between the Arabs and Israel in Israel for the first time since they lost uh, this area in East Jerusalem uh, for the first time they actually got Jerusalem back and so they uh, they actually own the the Temple Mount although they have given the administration of uh, over to the uh, the Arabs uh, on the Temple Mount itself, but that's going to be ratified in, in the near future. And uh, we know because the, the Temple will be built at their Temple. Now, occupy, occupying East Jerusalem has become a burden throughout the whole world for every one of the politicians in the many countries that have dealt with this problem, the problem of ownership of Jerusalem, specifically East Jerusalem, because that's where the uh, Islamic Holy Shrine is, and also where the Temple Mount is. And so we see news like this that doesn't surprise me today that the U.S. criticizes Israel over the Jerusalem settlement. What happened is Israel went in and they bulldozed uh, some houses in East Jerusalem. This is the the occup occupied area where. The Palestinians are saying that it's their land and Israel's just occupying it. But when you go back and you look at the uh, history of what had happened, uh, they they actually were getting part of God's promise that was set out in the Old Testament. 
Let me read you this. It says, Israel bulldozers cleared the way for 20 new homes for Jews in East Jerusalem by demolishing a, uh, a uh, derelict hotel Sunday in a settlement project that angered Palestinians and drew criticism from the United States. Now, the United States, little by little, they're, they're making gestures that are, are going against Israel, whereas we were always allies with Israel. But the, it looks like the tide is turning, and if the scripture tells us that all the nations will come against them, that includes the United States. And so what we're seeing here are little signs of the birth pangs. It says, construction at the Shepherd Hotel compound, whose ownership is, is contested, was likely to deepen the Israeli-Palestinian uh, hegemony in, wa in Washington ties and and uh, ties to revive the peace talks. Negotiations are stalled uh, by a dispute over yeah, Israel's settlement policy in the West Bank and East Jerusalem. So East Jerusalem is, is almost in the news just about every day, at least two or three times a week, for sure. But I've been checking it out, and almost every day there's something somewhere around the world about the problem of East Jerusalem and the ownership between, uh, and the dispute that the Palestinians want this thing back. It says the negotiations are stalled by a dispute over Israel's settlement policy in the West Bank and East Jerusalem, areas captured, and they pointed out, in the 1967 war. What is happening today is part of the political program of the Israeli government to preempt any solution on Jerusalem. Palestinian chief negotiators, this is one of the statements to be made today. Also, the U.S. Secretary of State Hillary Clinton in a in a in a, a dub, Dubai on the tour of the U.S. Gulf state allies said, this disturbing development undermines peace efforts to achieve a two-state solution in particular this move contradicts the logic of a re re uh, reasonable and necessary agreement between the parties and the status of Jerusalem. Now, this is this is where I get up, you know, kind of leery about what Hillary is saying, because Hillary is leaning towards a two-state solution as being directed by Barack Obama. And according to the scriptures, anybody who, who tries, you'll see this in Joel, I believe it's chapter 3, uh, anyone who divides the land of Israel will be themselves, we see, destroyed. And so when, when you see the United States, or anybody for that matter, saying that they're going to split up Israel, kind of sends shivers through my body because I know the word of God and what it says and what's going to happen to those countries. But this is the direction not only the United States is going into, but uh, we see it in other throughout the world. And the European Union is pressing for it. The Isla obviously, the Islamic nations are pressing for it. And there's only a few handle uh, countries of, of countries that are still uh, semi close with Israel. But we see because of what Israel's doing, that friendship is waning away. And I can see down the future where uh, all the nations will be coming against Israel because of East, the problem of the failed peace talks and giving back East Jerusalem. So you should be keeping your eyes on the, uh, the news when it comes down to that because there is a, a war coming. And they, now what's going to happen here is the Palestinians who see that Israel is not negotiating in good faith and they're just going in and bulldozing these houses, preparing uh, new homes for the Israelis in the eastern section of East Jerusalem, uh, then you'll know that there's going to be some major problems. And I've been saying this for a long time that what will happen is it's just going to click. I believe it's going to happen very, very quickly. And one of the reasons why I say this is because of 1 Thessalonians 5.3, where Paul said when they're calling for peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes. And I believe that that's what's going to happen. They're already talking about this peace process, but it's stalled, as you can see. Uh, and now that when they, the Palestinians see that Israel is just going to go in there arbitrarily, just knock down homes and keep doing what they want to do, it's going to really tick them off. 
and eventually what will happen is it's going to snap and they're, say, they're going to say, let's go and take out Israel. I really believe that that's going to happen, and I don't think it's going to happen too far in the near future. I did notice that it says, Palestinians want East Jerusalem to be the capital of the state they seek to establish in the West Bank and Gaza Strip. Clinton said that the United States believed that negotiation was the only way to realize the aspirations of both parties for Jerusalem and said Washington would continue to press both sides to resolve core issues. They've been trying to resolve these issues ever since um, 19, I believe it was 1977 when Jimmy Carter and Sadat and Begin got together to, to talk about the first uh, peace uh, agreement with, between Egypt. And ever since then, we've been seeing the birth pangs of the wars and the, the peace process begin and stop and there'd be another war, another conflict, all signs of birth pangs. And again, I have to mention Mark 13, 8, because this is where the Lord said in the last days, these events, all the events were going to happen as a woman with birth pangs. And this is exactly what we're seeing. So in the, in the near future, you should watch. Uh, the, keep your eyes on the Middle East because that's where it's all going to start right there in the Middle East and uh, the next war will be between I believe uh, will be the Psalm 83 war when the Arabs say enough's enough the peace process isn't going to work let's go out and take them at least try to take them out but as you read Psalm 83 that's not going to happen Israel is not going to be defeated and uh, please again accept Christ as your Savior it's, and, and have that hope that the Lord is coming for us to remove us out of here. And uh, that is the true blessing. God bless.